Hello, everybody. Thank you very much. And once again, we go directly to the Easter egg desk with Stevie. Stevie, how are you feeling today? Well, hi there, Rocky. I'm feeling very, very, very good. I have my, my radio cold voice going on. It's very deep. It's very, very... Dim- so sonorous. Yes, commanding. Yes. Mm. But we have lots of Easter eggs, as you can imagine. This yes. was There was a lot of callbacks in this episode, which was super fun. Um, the weather towers that we had, there was a strong suggestion that the weather on Earth and other Federation planets is controlled by low-key terraforming technology in at least the time of the voyage home. And in whistle speak, Burnham and Tilly have to find a weather tower that's malfunctioning. And this particular mission hasn't happened before, but it was really reminiscent of Trek episodes from days gone by. We had going undercover with an indigenous culture, as we mentioned, plenty of examples of those. In the original series, we had Passion of Force, Return of the Archons, A Private Little War, and the Paradise Syndrome as well, where the crew has to infiltrate planets and pass themselves off as natives. And oh my God. also in the Next Generation episode, Who Watches the Watchers? And of course, at the beginning of the feature film, Insurrection. And if you remember also in Strange New Worlds, Pike, Spock and La'an all went undercover similarly in the series yeah. premiere of that show entitled Strange New Worlds. That's right. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. yes, 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 yes. And in fact, the very first glimpse that we ever get of Michael Burnham in the Vulcan Hello, she and Captain Giorgio <gasps> yes. were trying to save a pre-warp civilization from a drought without being detected. Hello. So a little, Man. That's a little callback. You're really finding the connections, the gems from season one to season five today. Okay. Love the callbacks. As we mentioned, we had the subcutaneous comms. They had actually been used before by Kirk and Spock in the episode Patterns of Force, which we mentioned. So, again, mm-hmm. part of this throwback to indigenous cultures and subterfuge. We had Denobulans, as you mentioned. For our, our favorite Dr. Phlox gets a little shout out, if you will. Mm-hmm. And not a shout out, but certainly a little. He's, he's the most prominent Denobulan. That we've. That we've we know, yes. And we've seen Delobian Dim fuck. We've seen Denobulans sorry, it's catchy. Mm, <laughs> on Lower Decks and Prodigy and briefly in Strange New World Season 2. Yes. But despite being mentioned, we actually don't see a Denobulan in this episode or throughout Discovery so far. I was very mm. sad about that. As you mentioned, we get a callback to remembering that Michael Burnham was a xenoanthropologist, mm-hmm. which I think is quite fun because she's actually perfect for away missions of this nature because of her background, unlike, shall we say, several other Starfleet captains who would frequently go on missions like this without relevant experience whatsoever. Yeah, or commanders. Mm, indeed. Who would go down there and just start having sex with everyone. Very true. But if you remember the chase, and it was Captain Picard who, was, who went off in search, and he's got this you know, deep archaeological background. Yeah. So he's got somewhat of a, a real tie to this in a way that Michael Burnham has a, a real tie to this. Yes. I'm just thinking of Riker getting some basic facial surgery and or whatever and then going down and being like hey what's up yeah Mm -hmm, Yeah. mm -hmm. so we also had a throwback to paradise syndrome so overall the whistle speak um story in this episode feels like a very modern update of a quite a tricky uh tos episode called paradise syndrome where kirk lost his memory and became part of a tribe of native americans who lived on a a non-earth planet which wouldn't really fly these days yeah it was the 60s it was the 60s yeah yeah, Um, they were trying to do something they were they did a lot of things so you know you can always get it right yeah Exactly. But the sci-fi premise was really interesting here, even if the politics were a bit weird. Um, and so a device that was placed on, a, on the planet by an advanced alien race designed to protect the people of that planet malfunctions and gains religious significance. So it, this is pretty much exactly what happened. So another really cool callback. Um, interestingly, this connection goes even deeper when you realize that the preservers mentioned in that episode were the first indication that an advanced humanoid species seeded several planets with humanoid life forms. So perhaps without the Paradise Syndrome of the original series, we wouldn't have had the chase in the next generation and we wouldn't have this entire storyline in Discovery. Uh, to quote to quote Tilly, you know, it's a massive responsibility, technology. It certainly is. Well, I'll keep that on that bombshell. I hand it back to you in the studio. <laughs> 